We're continuing our studies of nitrogen metabolism from Chapter 18, and our subject in this lesson is the synthesis of non-essential amino acids. Remember that these are amino acids that we can synthesize if we don't include them in our diet. The primary way in which these non-essentials are synthesized is some kind of transamination reaction. We've looked at this already in lecture, and it's illustrated at the bottom of the screen here. We start with the amino acid aspartate, the keto acid pyruvate, and we form the keto acid oxaloacetate and the amino acid alanine. In other words, the precursor for aspartate is oxaloacetate, and the precursor for alanine is pyruvate. So in this one transaminase reaction, we can synthesize either the amino acid alanine or aspartate depending on the needs of the cell. As you can see, it's readily reversible, and so depending on the level of substrates, we can form either alanine or aspartate. As we go through these reactions, let's check off our list of non-essentials, these amino acids, as we learn how they're synthesized. So we check off alanine and aspartate. Next we look at the synthesis of glutamate. Its precursor is alpha-ketoglutarate. Again, it's a transaminase reaction. For the synthesis of glutamine, remember we looked at this in lecture. It's catalyzed by the enzyme glutamine synthetase. We take glutamate and transfer an amine group to the side chain to form glutamine. So now we can check off these two amino acids on our list. So far, the reactions we've considered are prim primarily these transaminase reactions. Here we have the synthesis of asparagine. We start with the amino acid aspartate, and we're going to transfer an amine group from glutamine to the side chain to form asparagine. Of course, glutamine becomes glutamate. So we're transferring the amine group from one the side chain of glutamine to the side chain of aspartate. This is actually an amination rather than transaminase reaction. A trans, in a transaminase reaction, we transfer the amine group to a keto acid. Here we're transferring it to an amino acid. It's catalyzed by synthetase. Remember, that means it costs some, us some energy in the form of ATP. So let's check off asparagine off our list. Again, this is not a transamination reaction, but an amination. We can start with the amino acid glutamate, and from that we can form arginine and proline. These are longer pathways, and we won't be looking at those steps. You just need to know that the precursor for arginine and for proline is glutamate. You can see the five carbon backbone highlighted in blue here. Here you can see the backbone in arginine, and that that's uh, built from that backbone of glutamate. And here it is in proline, highlighted in blue. Remember, proline is, is our amino acid, where we form a cyclic structure with that alpha amine group. So now let's check off arginine and proline on our list. Next, we want to look at the synthesis of serine. The precursor is 3-phosphoglycerate, and the reaction is highlighted at the bottom of the screen here. We first oxidize it to form a keto acid, and then we're going to transfer an amine group from glutamate to that carbonyl carbon to form 3-phosphoserine. Of course, in the process, we'll generate alpha-ketoglutarate from that glutamate substrate. We're, in the last step, we'll uh, clip off that phosphoryl group, and that will give us serine. You don't have to know the details of this reaction, simply that the precursor for serine is 3-phosphoglycerate, and it is similar to a transaminase reaction because we are transferring an amine group to that carbonyl group. So let's check serine off our list. Next, let's look at the synthesis of glycine. It's actually made from serine. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction has a special cofactor that we haven't considered before, tetrahydrofolate. This is a very important cofactor. You'll sometimes see it illustrated as THF. We're going to see this again when we look at nucleotide biosynthesis. 
So serine is that the side chain of serine is removed as a methylene group and transferred to this cofactor and thereby we form glycine. So in this you want to remember that glycine is formed from serine and that it involves that special cofactor tetrahydrofolate. At, here's the detailed structure here in the center of the screen and at the bottom you can see highlighted in blue that methylene group. This is the portion of the cofactor that carries that methylene group. This cofactor is important as a carrier of one carbon compound. So we see it in both amino acid biosynthesis and also nucleotide synthesis. So let's check glycine off our list. Now there's still two more on our list of non-essentials, cysteine and tyrosine, but remember we synthesize these from essential amino acids and so we'll consider those in the next lesson. In our next lesson on nitrogen metabolism, we'll see how other organisms synthesize the essential amino acids that we are unable to make for ourselves.